Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to expand upon some of the previous date selection videos that I've done. I've had a few people comment on those previous videos that they'd like to see additional filter selections for fiscal year and quarter to date. So I've gone ahead and updated the file to now include selections for both fiscal and quarter year and prior year to date. So we're going to go ahead, hop into Power BI and see how it's done. So before I show you the DAX code to show you how I generated the date selection table, let's go ahead and just see the time periods that I've created. So as you can see here, I've created fiscal year to date, which you can see as represented for the range over here. And we're going to look at the measure in a second to see where my start and end dates are as well. I also have fiscal quarter to date and then a prior fiscal year to date and a prior fiscal quarter to date. And outside of these new ones that I've added, you can also see that there is a bunch of other filters in here as well. That was actually built in one of my previous videos, so I'll go ahead and link you to that down in the description below or over on the pane on the left. But for now, what I'm going to do is come over to the fields pane here, and I'm going to show you the date selection table. I'm going to open that up. And again, a lot of the stuff that's in here was created in those previous videos. So I will again refer you to, to that last video that I made as part of this series that will explain some of the other things that I built into here. What I'm going to highlight in here is this section in the middle between line 14 and 47, which are the new variables that I created to create the ranges based on fiscal. So I'm gonna start here. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit just so you can read it a bit better. So this is the only thing that you will need to modify is this line right here, which asks for whatever the fiscal month in number is. So as an example, if your fiscal month was to end in May, you would put that here. So whatever the month is that your fiscal year rotates through and ends in, that's the number that's gonna go here. Now for all of these calculations, I'm making an assumption that with any fiscal period that you're going between, the month number will change, but your period will always end at the end of that month and then start at the beginning of the next month each time the cycle goes through for your fiscal year. Now for this file, what I've done is built in a ability for you to change when your fiscal period starts as far as the month goes. However, I am making an assumption that in all of these cases, your last month goes through the end of the month and then it starts at the beginning of the next month. There was some added complexity that I ran into when it came to finding and being able to dyna dynamically create all of these ranges if you actually had your fiscal periods that restarted in the middle of the month. So I've gone ahead and left that out. And again, simplified it just to assume that the month will always start at the very beginning for your new uh, fiscal period. And it always will end at the end of the month for the very last day of a fiscal period. So change whatever you need to here. So as an example, right now it's starting in May. If I was to change this to say, uh, let's go ahead and say June. So that basically would be six. And when the assumption being that this means that your last day of the fiscal year is 630 because that's the last day of the month in June. So if I move that here and just collapse this for a minute so you can go and see the range. You can see that it is now starting on 71 for fiscal year to date coming through 32821, which is the current day as the recording of this video. So go ahead and open this back up again. And then everything else here is going to be calculated for you. Fiscal year start that simply does is it determines whether or not the fiscal year start needs to be in this year or the prior year. And that's what that line is doing right here. Uh, if the month from the current day that we're in based off of the max refresh time from this file, if that month is less than or equal to whatever the fiscal month end is, then it's going to go and have the year be from the prior year, which is when that year would have started for that current fiscal period we're in. Otherwise, return the year from the current year. And this calculation here basically just determines whatever the current fiscal quarter is based off of the fiscal start date. And that just gives us a quarter between one and four. And then that is actually used down here to determine for the fiscal quarter start, whether or not if you're in period one, two, three, or four, it's basically just going to run a calculation to return the start of that quarter for that uh, fiscal quarter to date range or prior fiscal quarter to date range, which is down here, which just returns the same number, but just in the previous year. And just like all of my other ranges, they're basically populated down here into the bottom. So here's my range for fiscal year to date, my range for fiscal quarter to date, prior fiscal year to date, and prior fiscal quarter to date at the bottom. And these go into a DAX generated calendar table, which is here that is linked via a bi-directional relationship to my calendar table, which links back to my data table. So that allows me to have those selections in a filter, which populates through it. And I do have a use relationship turned on in here. Better said, this relationship is turned off and the measures that can utilize this feature has the use relationship function to call upon the filters that are coming from here and propagating to the calendar table and then down to the data table. And again, a lot of the information explaining all of that is through parts one through three that I built in a previous portion of this video series. So I'd recommend to go ahead and check those out. Links are down in the description below.
Now, as far as use cases go, we've seen that we can use them in a date slicer, which can be very convenient just to be able to filter visuals on the page to any of these time periods that we've created. I've also discovered that it can be pretty useful if you wanted to put this onto a visual itself and to show on rows the ranges that are between these. Now notice that I have the subtotals turned off because these are not cumulative. These cannot be added together to any real number because many of these are overlapping periods, but you can just quickly see based on whatever data that you might have, what is the number that is aligned to any of these periods. All of these top ones above here are from those previous videos. Here's my bottom four that I created for fiscal, but it gives you an ability to just quickly compare time periods with each other in a visualization itself. Now I'm not advocating this as a right or wrong way to do versus using just measures as well to do that, because you can also do a lot of fiscal ranges or just in general year to date ranges in the DAX measure that will pre-filter that into the visual. Now, personally for this, again, this originally came out in part one of this series because a client of mine had a request to basically just have a slicer on the page that lets you pick between periods. So that's where this entire concept came around with the generated table connected to the calendar table, which then lets you filter the data itself. And finally, getting around to adding fiscal because that was such a heavily requested feature. Thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. If this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, smash that subscribe and notification button. And last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below.